I'm delighted really to be here um, to uh, conduct an interview with a, a group of people and with Ron Britton, uh, who's an internationally renowned uh, analyst and a distinguished member of our own society. Um, and one thing before we start, I'll just say a few things about Ron, but also about the, the interview. Um, because we're being filmed, um, I'd like to encourage people to allow silence uh, and not to feel that we've got to instantly jump in the minute there's a silence, um, because it can be edited afterwards anyway. Um, now, Ron is uh, a clinician. Uh, he's also, to my mind, uh, someone who contributes significantly to theory as well. Um, concepts that he's brought in uh, that extend psychoanalytic uh, thinking is the triangular space, uh, is the uh, third object, um, and I see I see one as part of the continuing declining development of Freud's thought. Um, but today, I, I think there'll be many questions about what it is to be an analyst, uh, the the possible directions it might follow in the future, the the dangers to its continued existence. And anything really that people around the table uh, want to ask, and what Ron would like to share with us. Um, so we can begin. Uh, does anyone have any thoughts to start with? Maybe you can tell us something about the beginning. How how did you get to know about psychoanalysis? How did you get in that world? Yeah. Um, well, that, that's quite a long story because I, I, it's an accidental development for most of us, I think. Um, I, I actually read Freud at school, um, so I suppose my interest was quite early. And for some reason, reasons which perhaps I should know better from my two analyses. Um, I, I was interested in being into psychiatry even at the point at which I first decided to do medicine. So I started, um, once I was at medical school, um, spending vacations doing psychiatric, voluntary psychiatric nursing, actually. Um, which was great because I, I I was able to have a lot of conversations with psychotic patients, which has borne fruit, I think. It, it, uh, initially, I think, it, it, uh, the fruit seemed to be in the other direction, actually. I, I was getting more confused. They seemed to be rather clearer. <laughs> um, which perhaps is a lesson one has to learn anyway, to become an analyst. Um, then then I, 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 I did medicine. And uh, was drafted into the army, so I was a, a doctor after I'd done hospital work and so on. Specialised in psychiatry and in child psychiatry, and then went to the Tavistock eventually to do and train in psychotherapy at the Tavistock, and started from there my analysis, first analysis, and then the institute training and my second analysis and from then on and uh, uh, that's quite a, a time ago I mean I qualified really in 1979 so it's a while ago um, as to what factors involved becoming an analyst I think it was combination really of the fact that uh, when I was at school, my two big subjects were literature and biology. And I was, like everybody else, forced to choose a scientific route or a literary route. And it really wasn't until I got back into psychoanalysis and into analysis that these two things came together for me. And uh, so it was the first profession or job which combined the, these elements, in fact. 